Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from premiumbeat.com and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create a freeze frame title animation. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects and we can get started right off the bat. So what we're gonna do is take a video clip and we're going to grab a freeze frame from here and we are going to take that and animate it with some title animation. So we have time to kind of do more of like, like a classic sort of, you know, introduction to a, you know, a TV series or whatever that you're looking to do. You're going to be able to take video and freeze frame it and add title and other animations to the freeze frame. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go over here to the film strip icon to create a new composition. Or you can go up to composition, new composition. And we're going to call this tutorial main and using 1920 by 1080 23.976 frames per second and we'll have a comp size of 15 seconds click ok and we're gonna bring in our footage right off the start so come over here got our footage and just drag it into the timeline down here and we have our video clip right here which is only about you know five seconds so you want to make sure that your timeline is definitely longer than your video clip so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna find a nice spot to do a freeze frame so so this should be an okay frame to freeze our video and what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure to select our video layer down here go up to edit split layer and then we're going to take our timeline playhead over by one frame and we'll go back up to edit split layer so we should have three layers here and then we're going to grab our layer in the middle here which is the one frame video we're going to right click the layer go up to time and click on freeze frame okay and now what we can do is drag out this you know, one frame all the way out to a couple of seconds. So we'll move this over to maybe, I don't know, maybe seven seconds. We'll go to eight seconds here. And then we'll take our, you know, end of our video over here and we'll push this all the way to the end of our freeze frame here. So basically what's going to happen now is we have our video playing and then boom, goes right into the freeze frame and that will play for a couple of seconds and then it goes back into the video. So that's exactly what we want to do. So we have about four seconds of freeze frame here, which is good enough for me. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we pre-compose the freeze frame layer here. So, so what we're going to do is select the freeze frame layer, go up to layer, click on pre-compose and we'll call it, you know, freeze frame and make sure to click on move all attributes into new composition. Click OK. So now that our freeze frame is pre-composed, I'm going to move our uh, layer here all the way to the, that exact moment where the freeze frame takes place. And then I'm going to double click this composition and move this clip all the way to the beginning. And that's just more of a preference thing for me to make sure that the beginning of this composition is actually the first frame of our you know animation here. So there's probably a million different things that we can do to make this freeze frame look great. But we're going to be focusing on title, separating our subject from the background, and just doing a little bit of animation to help spice it up. So hopefully you can be able to take some of these techniques and apply it to whatever you're doing with your freeze frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to separate my subject here from the background so we can put th put objects behind our subject. So what we can do is we want to duplicate our freeze frame layer here. So go up to edit, duplicate. So now we can mask out our subject here and there's two options here. We can use the pen tool or the roto brush. You know, for me, I think the roto brush is really best for when you're using actual video. In this case, we have a still image. So I'm just gonna use the pen tool over here. And basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come here and add points manually. And to me, this is just a little bit more, you know, uh, I have a little bit more control over just masking over um, the subject here. So make sure to just, you know, be as close as you can and go ahead and like, as you're moving around here, you can hold down space bar to grab the hand tool here and have a, you know, be able to slide it over and get, you know, to your next point. So go ahead and just mask around your subject or whatever that you're looking to mask out. And as far as hair goes, you don't have to be on spot perfect. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of feathering, so it should be okay. All right, and when we're done, we're going to go ahead and close this up. And now if we turn off the bottom layer, we'll see that our subject is isolated from the background. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to hit F on our keyboard for mask feather. And we're going to feather this out to maybe like 20, 30 points. 
and we should be really close. And of course, we can refine some of these masks at the top here to help, you know, blend this in just a little bit better. So of course, we can see a little bit of the edges around our subject's hair, but we're gonna be more than okay at this point because we're still gonna keep the background in there. We're just gonna manipulate it just a little bit. So what we can do is rename some of these. So I'm gonna call the bottom layer the background, and I'm gonna call our top layer the mask. All right, so let's go ahead and add a little bit of effects to the background here. So let's go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and we can call it BG effects. And we'll go ahead and put this adjustment layer right underneath our mask layer. And then we'll go up to effect, blur and sharpen, and we'll add Gaussian blur. So we'll go ahead and increase the blurriness to maybe about 20 or 30 points here. Somewhere between that number, I like that. And then we can also go up to effect, color correction, you know, tint, and we can add a black and white effect. I'll go ahead and set the amount to tint to about 50%. So we'll just separate our back our subject from the background even more and make sure to check on repeat edge pixels for the Gaussian blur. So that's all good. And now what we can do is go to the beginning here for our timeline, hit T on keyboard for opacity, add a keyframe for opacity and move this keyframe forward in time, maybe by a second and set the opacity down to 0%. So we'll kind of have like this nice sort of fade in so it, the video will play, we'll have we'll see the freeze frame and then the animation will begin. And then we can come here and hit F9 on our keyboard to make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe. So let's say we actually want to add something in the background like a shape or an object. I'm just going to stick with shapes for this tutorial. So what we can do is grab say the rectangle tool and we can draw out a nice thin rectangle kind of like this, very thin. And we can come up here to the top and click on the word fill. And we can add, say, a linear gradient and click OK. And then we'll click on the color option over here at the top. And we can, you know, change the colors here a little bit. So we can do like a nice little gradient. So I'll do like something yellow. And we'll change our black stop over here to maybe a darker yellow and click OK. So we'll just have like a nice gradient going on here. Just something, some detail in here. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add a repeater. So go to the shape layer, click on the arrow next to add, and let's add a repeater. And we'll come in here to repeater one, and we'll go to the transform repeater one, set the X position here to zero, and change the Y position up just by a little bit. So maybe we'll do like 60 around that area. And then we'll increase the number of copies by a lot. Okay, and we'll come back over here and just move this up all the way to the top, so that's looking good. And we'll rename this layer to lines or something like that. So we're just messing around with shapes and we'll bring this shape layer underneath our mask layer. So you can see it's right behind our subject and things are looking cool. So we can go here and animate this by a little bit. Um, so what we're gonna do is I wanna animate the lines coming in individually. So we'll go to back into repeater one, go ahead and transform repeater one. And if we've changed the X position by a little bit, you can see how these lines kinda come in individually. So what we're gonna do is go to about maybe two seconds within to our animation, add a keyframe for position, go to the beginning of our timeline, and we're going to increase the exposition until uh, we see some of these top arrows leaving our animation here. And then what I'm gonna do is go back to, you know, hit P on my keyboard for position and raise these initial lines up all the way until they're outside. So we come here, we can scrub through all this, all this animation here, and that should be cool. So that's looking good. And then we can hit T on our keyboard for opacity and change the opacity down to maybe like 34% or so. So it helps blend, so it can blend into our background a little bit. So that's looking cool. Okay, so from here, let's go and create our titles. We're gonna grab the text title tool, which is at the top here. And we can type out our title, which could be the name of our show, which in my case, I'll just type out freeze frame titles. Okay, so now that my title is in here, I'm also gonna create a background for it. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and I'm gonna draw out a nice rectangle background for this and make sure nothing is selected when you do this and just draw out your rectangle, kind of like a nice little background here. And we'll click on the word fill and we're gonna set this to solid color, click okay, click on the word stroke and set this to none. And then we can change the fill color to black. And then we can hit T on our keyboard for opacity and we can bring this down. And of course, let's bring this shape layer underneath our text layer. And we can rename this to text BG. And that should be good. So let's go ahead and just do a little bit of you know reframing here and making sure everything's gonna look nice. And when we're satisfied with our results, what we can do is grab the background and our title here, and we can hit P on the keyboard for position. 
and let's find a nice place where we want this to animate in. So maybe like right after the lines are in, let's add a keyframe for position, move those keyframes forward in time, maybe by like a second or so. And then let's go ahead and animate the X position off screen, kind of like this. And we can make the last keyframes right here, easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And this will kind of come in like this. And that's looking good. And of course we can duplicate this and create a subtitle. And here we created another subtitle and I went ahead and actually moved the keyframes to the beginning of our timeline. So it comes in right when everything comes in. So that looks good. And now that we're basically looking good here, we have our titles in here, we have a little bit of background animation and we did a little bit of custom effects. Let's go ahead and turn on motion blur for all of our layers inside this composition, turn it on at the top. And then we can go back into our main composition here. And what I wanna do here is animate our uh, freeze frame comp here. So let's go ahead and open this up and let's hit P on the keyboard and hold down and shift S to bring up scale at the same time. And let's add a keyframe. Well, first let's alt click the stopwatch for position and let's type in wiggle, open parenthesis, 0. 0.5 comma 20, close parenthesis, and I'll zoom in real fast so you can check that out. So wiggle, open parenthesis, 0. 0.5 comma 20, close parenthesis, and just click off that one and you're done. And basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna create just a little bit of, I guess, camera shake, if you will. And you can see that the edges of the compositions are starting to get cut off by a little bit. So we'll come here and we'll add a little bit of a scaling animation to this. So let's add a keyframe for scale and let's move forward in time, maybe to, you know, the end of our animation here, which is probably around like almost seven seconds here. And let's scale this in by a touch. So like maybe like one, one Oh five percent, one Oh four percent. So we'll have like this very nice kind of zoom in effect. And towards the end here, before our next clip comes on, let's set the scale back to 100%. And we can make all these keyframes easy, easy keyframes. And for the most part, we should be ready to go, turn on motion blur and go ahead and render it out. And after a quick render, this is what we should have. And we should be able to see our video, see the freeze frame and kind of get right back into our videos. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more tutorials, please be sure to check out our blog at premiumbeat.com. And if you're in the need for royalty-free music, we have a huge library full of great music for your projects. So if you have the time, I invite you to check us out. Once again, thank you for watching this video. And this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com.